Good morning uh, everybody. It's Sunday uh, here in sunny Southampton. Not, it's very cloudy. Um, yeah, um, it's, uh, yeah, now the first thing I want to say is uh, I want you to think back to the very start of this video where that little picture appears. Now the painting itself is by a Russian artist born in Siberia called Eugene Ivanov. And I've, uh, uh, if you go to my channel page, the picture, the painting there is by him. And so that he kind of likes smoking. And quite a few of his paintings have people smoking pipes or cigarettes. Um, well, I don't know if there's any cigars, but yeah. So there we go. So he quite likes smoking. So, and I rather like his pictures. A kind of mixture of expressionist, uh, surrealist, and... Um, cubist really and uh, 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 looking at the broader anyway that uh, this isn't a discussion of art <laughs> history or that particular painting but I like his paintings anyway but now I want you to picture the start of this video that picture and I want you to think about who does that remind you of <laughs> and it dawned on me the other day <laughs> I was watching uh, uh, watching his video, he just received uh, a pipe from Patrick in Wales, uh, um, uh, and um, and I thought to myself, yeah, it, it looks like Giacomo. Uh, if if it had a little more whiskerish round the chin, it would be Giacomo. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Um, oh no, bloody, he's gone out. Um, yeah, so it's uh, Jubilee Day here. The Queen is celebrating 60 years on the throne. Um, yeah, so all the, the buntings out and whatnot. Um, I can't, well, as you can probably tell, I'm not that excited about it, but uh, they're having a big do over the park there, I suppose. And uh, But the weather's not very nice. But funnily enough, in 1977 it wasn't. I remember as a boy going up to, uh, I lived in a village then, and uh, we went up to the big house, as it were, and um, the the main attraction for the Jubilee, so this is in 1977, the Silver Jubilee, was um, a, um, a display of uh, sort of uh, uh, stunt style riding and whatnot in the all wearing uh, costumes from the TV series The Planet of the Apes. But the funny thing was, it was raining, <laughs> and um, and so there was a delay because and it, oh, this thing is what sticks in my mind. It was delayed because uh, they were uh, uh, they had to put lacquer, hair lacquer, they had to go send out for hair lacquer for these guys in their costumes so the hair wasn't damaged. Oh dear, so well, I don't know, they might have some shenanigans like that over the park. Um, anyway, I'm going to like this pipe. Oh, I've got a match out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm. thought I'd just burn a hole in my shirt. Smoking a uh, William Ashton Taylor made Ashton pipe. It's um, a kind of deep, rich red, uh, beautiful, beautiful sandblasting. Um, uh, the briar comes from Tuscany um, uh, for the, for his sandblasted pipes. I don't think I think he gets, you know, from the various finishes. Is what you know he selects different briar, but apparently the Tuscan briar is very good for the. Uh, For the sandblasting, he started making pipes. I think his first pipe's 1983, and he sadly died a few years ago now. Um, this one was made in 2001. Uh, I bought it brand spankers. It was, uh, uns you know, not an estate pipe. It was a new pipe, and um, he uses an oil treatment. Um, I've read on forums that he claims it. You know that's unique to his pipes. Dunhill actually have the patent for uh, 
an oil treatment as done her patents for most things like shellfish things like that they registered the uh, the patents but um but yeah it has an oil treatment to be perfectly honest with you when i had my first smoke of it um I didn't really notice that much difference, to be honest with you. Um, but you know, it's a lovely pipe, uh, lovely shape. I love. I'm very much enamoured of the uh, Hungarian uh, stroke umpor shape. I suppose as an Englishman, I should uh, refer to it as a Hungarian. But uh, umpor Hungarian, it didn't for me really. Um, um, that's an allusion to the Anglo Boer War, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, um, but they're very nice pipes. It's they're quite expensive, um, and to be honest with you, um, I'm of a mind these days that um, that you know, fundamentally, a pipe's for smoking, and a, it doesn't. The, oh, you know the beauty of, of the grain in the briar or the, whoever's made it, it you know ultimately it, what matters is it's uh, it does it smoke well um doesn't matter you know if you've got lots of money to spend on pipes then by all means keep these firms going but uh, you know i don't think it's imperative that uh, that you know i have pipes that cost 20 quid that smoke just as well as this one which costs a considerable amount more than that so you know but anyway so what am I smoking in it? I'm smoking Stormfront. <laughs> when I first, I, I, I've got a, a little box underneath my, um, sorry, I keep looking at the time, I don't want to rab it on too long, uh, under my, and I've, all the sort of loose bag tobacco and things like that, I put in this box, uh, and it's a big box, and I'm trying to smoke my way through it. Poor old Clive must think I'm dead, um, because, you know, I've just got so much, and I've got lots of tinned and other things as well put to one side. I'm trying to smoke my way through them all. Anyway, Stormfront. The picture that came into my mind when I uh, got this one out was um, of some sort of extreme right newspaper, the Stormfront, being sold on a street corner by a uh, young gentleman of limited intellect with uh, with a very short haircut. Uh, thankfully, uh, the cure-all for that was to read some Hemingway about the sea. And... Um, and then I had pictures of the sea and, and a storm front coming in. Um, yeah, which I think is probably what uh, was imagined by the blender, who is, by the way, John Patton. Now, his, that was read, by the way. Uh, these um, Patton blenders are a little hard to find. Four noggins doing them, but they like esoterica. Uh, uh, out of stock quite a lot of the time. Um, this is um, a, a, a burly cigar leaf blend. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, um, I've smoked a few cigar blends. Um, Lewis's one, two, three mixture has got uh, cigar leaf in it, um, and I attempted to create one of my own. Um, what I did was I cut um, some discs out of a cigar, not a Cuban one, I have to say, a, a somewhat cheaper one, but nevertheless a good cigar from the Dominican Republic. And I cut some sort of 10 pence sized discs off and rubbed it out and then um, mixed it with a little um, Oriental and um, Virginia and Latakia. No, no, sorry, no Latakia. And um, to be honest with you, uh, found it very difficult, even with the proportions quite high of the cigar leaf that I put in it, to detect the cigar leaf as w one would taste it in um, in a cigar. Um, this is very much the same. It's very pleasant. Um, very pleasant, but uh, not, you know, you w I think... Um, you could be upset if you were expecting a cigar blend to taste like a cigar. You could be somewhat disappointed. You don't certainly get an odour of it in the um, of the smoke, a smell of it. But uh, for taste, it's very different. So anyway, 
I won't waffle on too much. Um, I'm sure those of you in the UK will be wanting to get away to your garden parties and street f f festivities for Her Majesty. Um, uh, yes. Um, so anyway, much appreciate you watching, much appreciate your comments and so on and so forth. Please do comment if you or ask questions. <laughs> I don't know whether I'll be able to answer them. Um, okay, well, I hope you all have a great week. Um, from me and Reg, who's snoring away. we we'll just come back from our long walk. Um, have a nice week. Cheers. <laughs>